Welcome back to the Backwoods Backyard. Today we're going to talk about trot lines. I'm ready to go get on some new water. I'm tired of walking around the pond. And uh, we're going to run some trot lines, catch some catfish. And this trot line is going to be based on catching channel cats and blue cats. You know, 12 to 14 inches long is what I'm going for. And you're just going to have to adjust your size of your hooks and swivels and your line everything if you want to go for bigger fish. But, this will catch some big ones. I've caught some up to 20 pounds on this tackle, but these Eagle, um, Eagle Claw laser sharp hooks, not the best. They will bend out. I've straightened some out on bigger fish, especially if they get tangled around a log where they can really get some force on it. These Gamagatsu hooks, I think it's a, this is, might be a kale hook, but I had circle hooks as well. They're a lot better, a lot heavier wire, but the eyes are smaller, so it's hard to find the right size eye to get your line through. So for my main line, this is going to be tied up from a tree on one side of the canal to the other. This is number 36 braided twine. If you got the twisted twine, it's going to be a pain. It's going to always come on twisted catfish when you get hung on there. They, they twist and twist and it'll unravel on you and it makes a mess. It knots up easy. It's just a, a big mess. So get braided line if you can. So number 36 for the main line, all my drops are going to be with 18. And I don't know if the colors matter that much, but I've used tarred line in the past. And I don't know if it's because it's stiffer. I've had them, I made jug lines out of them, and the ones with the tar line caught less than just the white twine that wasn't tarred. I don't know if it's the stiffness of the color, or if it gives off an odor that's different, but it's it's just what I've experienced. And it could have just been the luck of the draw, just how it happened that day. I don't know, but stick to what you got confidence in. I'm sure they all work. So the first thing you have to do is find out how long your drop lines need to be. So what I did, I took a five gallon bucket and I cut a bunch of slits in it with a grinder blade, cutting wheel. I tried it with a sawzall but they makes the uh, slits too narrow and it was the hooks wouldn't slip in it. This is going to be the storage for my drop lines. I want your hooks to be able to slide in and out pretty easy. With a sawzall or a hacksaw blade, it's too tight and it won't slide all the way down. And you want to stop right around the rim so your hook can just sit on it and keep the, uh, the point protected from snagging on stuff. So you got to take your drop line. I double mine up. Determine your length. I want it where your hook won't touch the bottom. So I'm going to thread a hook on. Get it to where it's about an inch, a, an inch or two from the bottom. I'm touching the bottom. Take into consideration that you got to tie a knot on the top. So right about there, that'll be about where my knot's going to be. I'll just make an overhand knot. tighten it up yet. I'll leave a little tag in on the end. So that's how long I'm going to make them. So that's the length of my drops. And what it's going to do is store them with the hook up here and all the bottoms are hang down without touching anything. But if you want to pre-bait them from home You'll have your chunk of meat or fish or whatever you're using on the hook, and you can hang it this way, and you're not a catch, catching a slot, and all your bait will hang down. That way your hook's protected, it got the bait on it, so it's not going to tangle up with the other hooks, and you'll have a lot of weight holding that hook down. But this is how I'm going to store it most of the time, because I'm going to bait out on the water. So once I put these on, run my line the first time, 
I'm going to leave the hooks on the line. I'm not going to be putting them back and forth on my bucket. So there's no sense in me pre-baiting from home because they're going to still be out on the water. So you can take it, untie your knot now, you know your length of your drop. And I already done this and I got a mark on my table. Take that hook off. And there's I got my mark here and my mark here. So that's my length. I know that's the length I need for my bucket. These are the hooks I'm going to be using just because that's what Walmart had when I went shopping. And it's a three yard size which will be fine for smaller catfish like I'm planning on catching. And it's the circle hooks. You can see the difference. I mean, they, they probably go rust, they're not gonna last as long. This is a Gamagatsu kale hook, I believe. It's a heavier wire, a better finish. But the Eagle Claw does have a bigger eye. It's easier to pass your string through than the Gamagatsu. But the finish isn't good, and there's little burrs in the eye, so when you're passing your line through it, it catches on those burrs sometimes. It's probably not going to be the best hooks for this situation, but that's what I got. It'll get me on the water and start catching fish, and I'll start changing them out as I go if I need them. No big deal if I lose one. So now I got my line measurement. Stretch it out, and I cut it. Burn ends. You can make a point on it, it'll be a lot easier to get the hook through it. See it's starting to snag. A little burrs on that finish. That's just terrible. Put your hook in the middle, tie your overhand knot, and leave some tag ends. That's going to come in, in handy later, and I'll show you why. Burn the tips. That's one. And I'll go ahead and store them on my bucket as I'm making them. Stretch your line out. Oh, let's do it from this way. Mark to mark, pull it over the fire and cut. Make you a little point. Mark to mark. Cut it. So you got your points. Let's go ahead and get you a big pile of them. I'll go ahead and get that done and uh, we'll be right back to start on the, the main line. Uh, 
uh, finished up with the Gamagatsu hooks. I was just having too much trouble with those Eagle Claw hooks. Just trying to grab the line. I was starting to shred the line. Just They got a bad finish in those eyelets. But the Gamagatsu's got a smaller eye, so we got to get this burnt part right. Get it through there. They go on so smooth, like it's meant to be. So I'm just gonna return the rest of those hooks. I can't make myself put all this work into making this line and not do it right. So I'll order some more Gamagatsu hooks. Probably the octopus circle circle hooks. Octopus circle hooks, I believe it's called. So I got Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve Gamagatsus and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen of the Eagle Claw circle hooks. But you can see how, like this one, the guy frayed the line. I mean, that's sad. I mean, it slips good unless it gets right where the, the eye is cut off and it crept it together and it'll catch, start catching little fibers. It probably ain't gonna last with a fish on it. I'll tear it up. So I'll replace them once I get new hooks, but this will get me out on the water for now. So now to the main line. Put all our swivels on. I think I got about a hundred swivels. Slide them all onto it, onto your line, toward the spool. Second knot. Make a loop. Pass the spool through it. And that's gonna hold our swivel in place. Stand that up close together and give you about a half inch in between. And you have your swivel. It can't slide, but it, the catfish can spin over, over and over your line. You can't go from one side to the other. So you just keep repeating your process. So when I got this end tied off and I'm running my line for the first time, 
This end's tied off. I get to my first swivel. The rest of it's all going to be spooled up around this PVC pipe. So I get to it. I'll take my drop. Pass both those tag ends through the swivel. Pull a knot through. Those number five swivels are big enough to get size 18 knot, 18 string knot through it. Open it up, pass the hook through itself. That's going to cinch up and swip. Keep pull it tight. And there's all your drops. Uh, when you go to take it off, you don't need those clips that everybody uses. That's why I left these tag ends. You pull up on this tag end and it'll loosen up your knot. Slide your hook back through it. You can get all your drops off. Get my length. Down the first knot. Drop it in a circle. Measurement, let it swivel about on the floor, about right there, about four feet. Then I swivel over. Drop it to the knot. Loop. Let the swivel and the spool at the same time. Put it in the loop. Flip it over. Trace the knot back to the swivel. There it is. Tighten them up. Alright, something I came across while doing this, I've been looking at it. And it's hard to match up the right swivels to your main line. Now, if I would have went with 48, number 48 or 46 main line, I think it would have been better for a number five swivels, or I can change my swivel size. You know, but the swivels are a little bit too big for just a single knot. I can't get it to cross over that knot. I don't know what it's gonna be like when it's submerged in the water for a while with all the swell. It'll be bigger where it won't be able to go. But I can't pull it over. But a big fish fighting on it with more leverage might be able to get it to hop off. That's my only concern. So I started pull, putting double knots in it. It's a lot bigger knot and it's solving the problem. So that'll work. But if I was to do it over again, I would get my main line a number 46 or 48 to go with number five swivels. So to make my double loop, go around twice. Another step. Now I got two overhand knots in it. Much bigger knot. Got to put a swivel in it. Everything goes wrong when you got the camera running. Never fails.
this one. See, 120 swivels. I think that was 500 and something feet of line. So we'll let out another 15 feet. I'm not gonna put this out all in one piece. I just put it out. It might just be ten hooks, you know, on each line, and then I'll cut it and start over on another spot. Run another ten hooks, and cut it. I went ahead and ordered some more of those Gamma Got Two octopus hooks, circle hooks. Three art is what I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna return all these eagle claw junk hooks. That don't work. No good. This is my tags I'm going to use to tag my lines with. You can find it on eBay or Amazon. It's plant ID tags. It's for flowers and vegetables or whatever varieties you want. It's just a piece of tin. Like aluminum foil. I guess it's aluminum. And you can write on it. they will stay indented however you write it. Write your tag number, attach it to your lines. Comes with twist ties, tie it on if you want. And a little case. And that's going to end it for making trot lines today. Maybe tomorrow we'll go put it out and I'll show you how this thing works. Thank y'all for watching. Like it, subscribe, hate it, I don't know. Tell me what you think.